what I'm all about! That's what I'm all about! How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to take a look back at the two games in the Premier League and we're also going to be talking about Arsenal because former Manchester United striker Andy Cole has said that Mikel Arteta does not believe in Alexandra Lacazette. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start at last night's Premier League games and West Ham, they keep going from strength to strength. 3-0 winners against Sheffield United and I think it's quite inevitable where they're going to be going next season. Um, but like I said, West Ham, what a season they are having. And David Moyes, I'll tell you something, hats off to him. I did not expect you know, him to get West Ham playing the way that they've been playing. Um, and where they are in the Premier League. It's been absolutely remarkable. And you think about, you know, the problems he had after he left Everton and then went to Manchester United and everything else. And it seems like he's rediscovered, you know, his managerial form that got him the Manchester United job in the first place. Because at Everton, he was brilliant. Um, one moment in this game... Um, you know, that I wanted to speak about because this is what VAR is for. Uh, West Ham had a penalty um, before ultimately they got a second penalty, but um, it was ruled out and rightly so. Um, it was Dawson that won the penalty um, after a Declan Rice free kick was saved. Um, you know, the penalty was given and then VAR um, intervened and said to the referee, I think you need to go and have a look at the monitor um, because Dawson, who won the penalty, was initially in an offside position when the free kick was taken. Referees had a look, seen it, it's ruled out. That is where VAR is used correctly. You know, you can praise referees, and I believe it was Michael Oliver in the VAR room um, that actually dealt with this decision. And fair play, that is where it's correct and where there's no controversy surrounding it. Much better. Um, and yeah, it's nice to actually say something positive about a referee for once. But yeah, in that instance, like I said, fair play. Um, but West Ham, they were, you know, very comfortable in this game, as the scoreline suggests. Um, Declan Rice with a penalty just before half time. Um, Diop just before the hour mark. And then Fredericks in the 96th minute put the icing on the cake and 3 0. Very, very good. Um, Chelsea um, against Newcastle United. And um, they're slowly going about their business after sacking Frank Lampard. I suppose you've got that new manager bounce and everything else and time will tell um, over the new manager. But so far, so good. He's getting victories and that's what matters. And uh, one particular moment in this game was Timo Werner scored a goal. And when he did, I think he looked as surprised as everybody. And I don't mean to you know, be disrespectful, but he has had a horrendous time in front of goal. Um, and that goal he scored was his first in the Premier League in 15 appearances, 1,001 minutes and 32 attempts later. Um, that was his first Premier League goal since November the 7th. That's quite a staggering statistic when you look at it. And I'm sorry, but when you pay that kind of money for somebody and they go that long without producing or performing, it's not good. And um, the pressure just keeps mounting over and over and over. Um, but yeah, he'll be as relieved as anybody to get his name on the score sheet. And um, yeah, like I said, Chelsea are going about their business. Um, you know, since Frank Lampard was sacked. Um, and... Ultimately, tests will come, bigger tests, but um, so far, so good. Um, and, you know, they're going 
about their business, like I said, and um, nobody's really paying too much attention, shall we say. Um, you're looking at the Premier League table. Uh, West Ham momentarily went into the Champions League places um, above Liverpool. Um, Chelsea are now in those Champions League places on goal difference. Liverpool, they're going to really have to sort themselves out big time um, if they want to, you know, not be playing Europa League football next season. That just does not seem like remotely possible given the last two seasons that Liverpool have had. Champions League winners, Premier League winners, and they could actually drop all the way down into the Europa League. Could get even worse. They could end up dropping out of Europe altogether. Um, at the moment, they're out of the European places. Um, but yeah, long way to go yet, that's for sure. And um, in terms of what it does at the foot of the table, well, Newcastle are fourth from bottom. Fulham, um, closest to them on 18 points. Still a seven-point deficit, but they will have a game in hand. And I'll tell you something, it's still all to play for, you know. I feel that Fulham are the one team that could possibly get themselves out of that mess. Um, and they do have a bit of a cushion. West Brom, Sheffield United for me, they're gone. Their time in the Premier League will soon be over. Um, 14 games left though. Stranger things have happened. But on the face of it, I think both of them are gone. Um... Next piece of news um, involves Arsenal and uh, former Arsenal, um, although he didn't really have a long career um, at Arsenal. Um, and Manchester United striker Andy Cole um, has claimed that Mikel Arteta doesn't believe in Alexandra Lacazette. Um, of course, for the younger generation that may not know who Andy Cole is, um, he made a name for himself firstly at Newcastle, prolific. Um, after Arsenal had sold him and then when he went to Manchester United he was just even better and the partnership that he had with Dwight York was just unbelievable uh, one of the best uh, Premier League strikers that's for sure um, but he was talking on TalkSport um, along with former Arsenal player Perry Groves um, and they were speaking about the situation and saying that, you know, after starting seven league games in a row, um, he will feel hard done by, you know, being left out of the starting lineup uh, for Pierre Emerick Aubameyang against Leeds United. Um, I actually think that they're reading a little bit too much into this. Um, Cole goes on to say that um, he believes that Lacazette would have felt hard done by. Um, sitting on the bench against Leeds and claimed his manager does not have faith in him. Look at Lacazette and I'm disappointed for him because I don't think Arteta believes in him. Um, he's looking at Bamiyan coming back um, after two games on the bench, gets himself a hat-trick. He'll be saying to himself, that could have been me. Um, Perry Groves, like I was saying, was also there and speaking about it. Um, and he says that as an Arsenal fan, I wouldn't want Lacazette to go. When he's playing, if it's not going right, he gets the hook after an hour or 70 minutes. He's played seven games on the spin. Arsenal haven't been great. And then you are playing against Leeds when you know they're going to concede goals for fun and you get left out. He'll be looking at that and thinking, do me a favour. This is a game that I should be playing in. I'm sorry, but I don't agree with either of them because I think that they are reading into this way more than they should do. Um, I feel that Lacazette was brought out of the side with Thursday in mind against Benfica. And then, of course, we've got Man City, then Benfica again, then Leicester away. As it turns out, Aubameyang comes in, scores a hat-trick. Now, that is unfortunate for Lacazette because I believe it's his place under threat on Thursday against Benfica. For me, Pepe comes back in the side on the left. Saka stays on the right. And Aubameyang goes up front. Um, but that's the life of a striker. You can't drop somebody that's just scored a hat-trick. Um, but yeah, I just don't agree with this. You know, that you know, Mikel doesn't 
you know, rate him or anything else. Do I think that he could possibly, you know, be sold in the summer? Yeah, I do, because he's only got a year left on his contract. But I don't think that that means that Mikel don't rate him because, you know, they're kind of contradicting themselves. They're saying he don't rate him. But then on the other sense, they're saying that he's just played seven games in a row. Well, if he doesn't rate him, why has he played seven games in a row? Doesn't make sense, does it? So, yeah, I think that they're uh, reading into that a little bit too much. Um, but, yeah, it's their opinion. And um, it is what it is. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash the like on this video, and I will see you lot soon. I'm out of here.